Joe Taylor. He's a singer, a songwriter, a music festival producer, a rancher, a father, husband, and a grandfather. Um, like most artists, he started out without much in his pocket. He wrote a lot of songs, but back then there were not a lot of venues for him to perform them. I guess it just happened, you know, when I was uh, about 10 or 11, my, my brother got a guitar for Christmas and, and uh, I was, I'm left-handed, so I was just waiting for him to, you know, get tired of it so I could change the strings on it and, and try to start learning how to play. Mid, uh, when actually late 60s, uh, we decided that we were going to be rock and roll stars and we uh, got a couple of the people together. At, at that time, I was making, the minimum wage was a dollar and 25 cents an hour. And we found out that the four of us could make a hundred dollars a night playing music in the small towns, and that made a lot more sense than a dollar and a quarter an hour. So we we were the second best band in a two-band town, and uh, that I guess was our hobby up until college was uh, either listening. We were either listening to music or playing music uh, in our free time. The first gig was at the uh, the community center at the projects and uh, we made two dollars which was like 200 a day <laughs> a lot of musicians get their start by you know reaching out to someone in the industry that's already established so for larry that was gary Pina, and gary p at the time was um it still is he's a singer songwriter a very well-known artist and he was also a record producer so um larry took a chance and reached out to Gary P to see if he could meet with him and take a look at some of his music. And that's where it got started. Gary played in, in Stephenville one night and I, for some reason I knew where he was staying but so I, I, I called uh, the, the hotel and they uh, called they called his room and I said, hey, I'm Larry Joe Taylor and I'm a songwriter and I said, I'm, I'm sure you hear this a lot but I said, I'd really appreciate it if you would uh, uh, meet me for breakfast and, and I, I want to give you a, a cassette tape of some of my songs. So he goes, yep, I can be there in about 30 minutes. So we went to the next, next door. Uh, we met at Tarleton in 1971 in the fall. It was my first year there. We met the first week of school. Larry's a year older than me, so he had been there a year. Uh, when we started this festival, until Zach was probably about 18, um, Larry and I pretty much ran everything just from our home. But my son was a teenager and he played drums for Larry. It, the times that I didn't go with them to, to gigs, you know, I would lay down all the rules. No, on your break, don't let him go outside. You know, he was 13 years old. And I came on board full time in 2002 and, and really got to to know Larry Joe Taylor as not just as a, a boss or a co-worker, but he's also a best friend and a family member to me as now. 1998, when the festival moved to Meridian, we were camped along the side of uh, the riverbed and next to us was a group of guys from Oklahoma that would play music at night and run around and and we became friends with them. And later on that evening, we found them at the campfire picking and playing. And maybe two days later, Larry actually invited those guys up on stage to, to sing a song themselves. So being able to see Larry find these new kids and pull them up on stage and give them an opportunity to play is, is special. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people don't get that advantage and that may be the only one step they get to perform in front of somebody and he allowed them to do that. Now, I guess the reason we started this thing was uh, you know back in the 80s there was uh, really not any place for original music in Texas if you wanted to do original music you had to go to Nashville and, or New York or LA and uh, it started you know very modestly but uh, as it as it grew, I felt like there was there was a, certainly a place for our festival in Texas at the time because there was there was not another one. There was not an original music festival, and there were a lot of young artists that were coming up that that needed 
something needed to boost and we uh, we felt like that we had something to offer for young artists. For me, especially when we moved to Stephenville, you look at the lineup that was on it, all four or five of those kids were playing on stage that next year and they continued to play out here. And those kids from Oklahoma were Cody Canada from Cross Canadian Ragweed, Jason Bolin, Mike McClure, and Stoney LaRue. Well, they're all kind of like my kids, so I'm, I'm proud of all of them. But. He is probably one of the best natured men that I know. He's uh, very kind, funny, um, witty, and he, you know, he's very patient. And, and Zach's a lot like that as well. And he and Larry is just so giving um, that if there's a way to help someone some way, he will find it. I think that that's his his always been his main goal as a singer songwriter, uh, trying to to help those people and get people more in tune to the art of being a singer songwriter because it, it is it's a, it's a tough business to be into. To, to have the time to write your own songs and then go out and perform them. It's always been about watching those young guys come in with their first song and and then seeing them on stage closing the show uh, 10 years later. You know, that's that's like a the proud papa 